How's it going, guys? It is 3.35 a.m. Sunday, the 25th of December, Christmas. Holy shit. Okay, so here in Japan, and we've got a past level question for renal for step one and step two. Not going to be a lengthy clip, just tell you the high yield points you need to know, not waste our time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group channel down below. And I'll start the clip. So, 81 year old man, today, history of fever. He has a history of hepatitis C and alcoholism, leukocytes 13,000 per microliter, normal range 4 to 11,000. Temperature 102 Fahrenheit. Urinalysis shows us 50 white blood cells per high powered field, 30 red blood cells per high powered field, and protein 100 milligrams per deciliter. Renal biopsy is shown. I'll talk about this image as we move through the question. The question just wants to know the most likely diagnosis. So let's just hop to the answer choices here. Choice A, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, wrong fucking answer. All you need to know for US simile is that this is a nephrotic syndrome. There's no blood in the urine. So instantaneously, we know it's the wrong fucking answer because we have blood in the urine. Okay. So it's a nephrotic syndrome, and it will be the answer on US simile if you have nephrotic syndrome in sickle cell. Okay, so if they give you a patient with sickle cell and they say there's a renal problem, no blood in the urine, answer is FSGS. If they give you sickle cell and they say dark urine, that's going to be renal papillary necrosis. Okay, I'll talk more about RPN as uh, we get further in the question. I just feel like splitting it up, being an asshole that way. Uh, FSGS, I mean, there are other miscellaneous details such as that it's not as responsive to steroids as minimal change disease, or that it can be caused by things like interferon use, et cetera. There's one question that you could be aware of theoretically that HIV is also a cause of F FSGS, okay? IV drug use, heroin, okay? And uh, HIV, there's one question where HIV causes FSGS, but primarily this is just nephrotic syndrome and sickle cell. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, good pasture syndrome, wrong answer. So this is a type 2 hypersensitivity against the alpha-3 chains of type 4 collagen. Okay, so we've got anti-GBM antibodies, anti-glomerular basin membrane antibodies. They target type 4 collagen in the basin membrane of the kidney, okay? Causes linear aminofluorescence. They show you a green, beautiful butterfly type of appearing uh, image on the US familiar. You're like, no idea what I'm fucking looking at. They give you a dude who's... 20s to 40s who has hemoptysis and hematuria, that's going to be good pasture syndrome. Okay, not dramatic, easy diagnosis. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Should I see a pato renal syndrome? Wrong answer. Pretty much non existent yieldness. I don't think I've ever seen this as a correct answer in US simile ever. Okay, for all the step one and step two material combined. When students don't know an answer, they tend to choose weird sounding shit. In theory, this can be a patient who has liver disease, cirrhosis, that somehow leads to renal failure, okay? I mean, you could be aware that renal biopsy is classically no change. I mean, if we want to get into specifics about it, as I said, non-existent yieldness, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, pyelonephritis, correct answer, okay? Now you say, well, I don't get it. You just said that this patient uh, doesn't have a pato renal syndrome. There's clearly cirrhosis here, maybe cirrhosis or hepatitis C alcoholism. So how do we know that this that this isn't hepato renal syndrome, for instance, even if it's low yield? It's because if you look at the image here, in addition to the fact the patient has fucking leukocytosis and fever, okay, if you look at the image here, you say, well, I don't know what I'm looking at, and I say, well, try. Okay, pretend. Just tell me what you might see in this image here. You say, okay, I see a bunch of pink, which is eosinophilic. Eosinophilic, not eosinophils. Eosinophilic means pink. Basophilic is purple. So you see this eosinophilic image, and it looks like there's basophilic cells there. There's purple cells and clusters, maybe within lumina. Okay, this is a very buzzy image for neutrophilic infiltration. This is pyelonephritis. Now, your initial response might be, really, that seems kind of nitpicky, nitpicky and hard. I can tell you it's not, and I can tell you that's past level, okay? And it's not specific for this image, by the way. They'll do this for prostatitis as well. They'll just say, old dude, he's got, you know, he's got pain, fever, and they don't have to get really more specific than that. They'll tell you biopsy of the prostate. Here it is. 
and you're like, well, no idea what I'm looking at, but I see a lot of purple cells. They're telling you that's infection, okay? That's prostatitis. So in this case, this is pyelo. And one thing I didn't mention in this question is costovertebral angle tenderness, CVA tenderness. It's a very high yield point that'll be present in pretty much, I'd say, greater than four out of five questions for pyelo on USMLA. Okay, it's just a kidney punch. There's going to be pain in the flank with percussion. Okay, that's CVA tenderness. Pathic mnemonic for pyelonephritis, ultra high yield for USMLA. The reason I didn't give it here is because we're testing the histo. Okay, I mean, that's the high yield point here, but it's it's past level histo, as I just fucking said. So pylo, you can treat with ciprofloxacin and fluoroquinolone. You can also treat with ceftriaxone. I've seen both as answers on USMLE. They care about the treatment for TCK. Real quick, renal papillary necrosis. I already mentioned it briefly. Uh, this is going to be dark urine in a patient who has sickle cell. It can also sometimes be NSAID use, and rarely it can be caused by infection. Okay, Now, the renal papillae, they receive fractionally less blood flow, so they can be prone to ischemic necrosis in patients who get sickling within the renal vasculature. Okay, Now, it's a bit tricky when I say that there's less renal blood flow to the papillae. But that's why you can get this pathology. It's tricky because tangentially, it's super fucking high yield that you know the PCT of the kidney is actually most susceptible to anoxic injury. Ultra fucking high yield, okay? High concentration of ATPase transporters has very high oxygen demand. So that's why we get slothing acute tubular necrosis if we have acute ischemia to the kidney. Okay, cellular swelling of the PCT, slothing of the, uh, the tubular cells within the PCT because of anoxic injury, high concentration of ATPase transporters. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.